Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Installing Gem Pack on your computer. Today, we're going to focus on Mac OS, which I actually think is going to be easier to install than on Linux, and many more people have the Mac operating system than use Linux. Um, I just want to start off by saying that you will see that I am actually going to be using a virtual machine running a Mac OS Mountain Lion. I tried to get Mavericks, but it's a little hard to virtualize at this moment. Um, this will work for Lion and probably will work for Snow Leopard, although I will warn and say that we do a couple things later on, like install a different uh, X11 library than uh, Snow Leopard has, so maybe you keep that in mind. And if you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, maybe I would just steer clear of using Snow Leopard and Gempack. So let's just jump into it. Before we actually get to any of the Gempack stuff, we have to install a couple software packages on Mac OS side of things, and then we'll get into the different gem pack libraries. The first thing we need to install is Xcode. Now Xcode is a program for developers, especially obviously iOS and Mac OS developers. It's a program that's used to develop uh, their programs on, but also installs a couple of library packages that help uh, programs that run Unix, or AKA Linux, which is the kind of the base for our gem pack program. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the App Store. And in the search bar, we're gonna go and search for Xcode. Should be the first hit. Go ahead and install that program. Now, within Xcode, we're actually gonna install another addition to Xcode called Command Line Tool. And I'll show you how to get that in just a moment. As you can see, I have fast forwarded and I have now opened up Xcode, agreed to the terms and conditions. When you are in the starter menu, go ahead, hit the Apple key or the command key, I don't know what it's called, command key plus the comma key. And then you'll see a new window open up. Go over to downloads. And as you can see here, there is something called the command line tool. Go ahead and download and install that. And once that's done and installed, go ahead and exit out of uh, Xcode. And we are done with Xcode, not ever having to go back into that program. All right, so the next program that we have to install is called MacPort. Now, if you're some familiarized with Linux, you know that you install packages and programs through the command line, through a package manager. Well, MacPorts does the same thing and enables you to install libraries and packages through uh, the command line. So go to the website, make sure you collect the right version. Now, if you have like Snow Leopard or something earlier, uh, there's a couple more steps in there, which I'm not gonna go through. But if you have Lion or anything above that, obviously this is just as simple as downloading the package and going through all the steps like you normally would for Mac OS. All right. As we finish installing Mac ports, I'm going to go ahead and talk about our next program, which is called Xcorts. Now, Gempack uses the command line, obviously, but it also visualizes a bunch of data. So you need that display um, visualization supported within your terminal. After Snow Leopard, Apple decided to stop supporting what is known as X11, which helps visualize um, whatever program you're using in command line. And so we need to go and download Xcorts, which will re-enable that feature slash download some packages that uh, no longer is supported by the newer versions of um, Mac OS X. And as you can see here, Xcorts, fairly simple download link. And I should also mention all links are going to be down in the description and or in my website. I haven't decided whether or not I'll just send you to my website or if I'll just leave the description or the links down in the description and go ahead and download and install like all the rest of the packages. All right, since this was running really slow, um, in the meantime, I downloaded Gempack, the actual program that we're gonna use to install. And as you can see here, um, go to the download page, link will be in the description. You do have to sign up with unit data, but that's fine. As long as you're not using it for commercial purposes, they really don't care. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that we are going to go and download the first link, which is the tarball. Go ahead, download that while we're waiting to finish this up. 
when you are done installing xcorts you'll get a prompt that says you need to log out and log back in actually just restart your computer at this point um, and this will make sure that the program is installed successfully and you do need to restart at this point when you come back we'll get ready to start installing some packages for Gempack. okay we are back from restarting our computer and as you can see i have two things open now xterm which is just our terminal from xcorts uh, just applications you can see up there and i just hit new terminal and you can see the actual installation guide by the software developers. Now, it's not a bad guide. Um, it's actually a pretty good guide, but it's just a little outdated at this point, and there's certain things that I do differently, um, but we'll get the same result. So you can see there's a couple packages we're gonna install there. Um, we're not actually gonna install all of those, so like I said, probably wanna follow along with me and not the guide. The first one we are gonna install is actually the first program you see there, which is our compiler, GCCC, or GCC, excuse me. Um, so go over to your terminal, sudo, port, install, and then GCC48, which at this, this time is the most up-to-date. Um, shouldn't matter if you use 4.8, 4.7, whatever. It should work, or 4.9, maybe even 5, whenever you're watching this video. So go ahead, and that will run through and install. As you can see, I am done installing. Right now, we have to actually select that program that we just installed as our main compiler. So go ahead, type in sudo port, and then select dash dash. Now, I make a mistake here, and you see I only do one dash. Uh, so dash dash set gcc space mp dash gcc48. Now, obviously, if you're doing 4.7 or 4.9 or 5, uh, those last two numbers will change. And you'll see now, selecting the MP48 for GCC succeeded is now active. Great. And as you can see, I'm already installing the next program, which is the fourth line in this installation guide. It'll also be down in the description. sudo port install xorg dash lib xtst which if you've seen any of my other guides, you'll know that this is also a package we install in that guide. But this will go ahead and download, and we'll install one more package, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, how could I forget? So we are going to install our last package now, and this is going to be Open Motif, which is a very important package for Gempack. So sudo port install Open Motif. And this will take some time. This is one of the bigger programs, but it shouldn't take too much longer than the rest of the packages we've done. All right, don't want to bore you with the installation process. Now we are ready to install Gempack. We're going to go ahead and untar the Gempack program we downloaded earlier. So go ahead, go into your downloads folder, double click it. All you need to do is double click it, and it should start expanding by itself, which is really nice. I uh, don't have to type any commands here. Um, for me, this took a while, but like I said, I'm running a virtual machine. So once that is done, we are going to go ahead and copy it to the desktop. Uh, now, obviously, you can install this wherever, but I like the desktop. I'm all about the desktop. If you want to put it somewhere else, go ahead. Just be warned that some of the steps I do later on, there will be an impact if you decide to put it elsewhere other than the desktop. And I go over this in my other guides, too. So if, like I said, I'm going with the desktop. It's going to be easier to follow along if you do, too. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead, since Gempack has been untarred, it is sitting in the folder, Gempack 6.10. That's the version I'm using. You might be using a different one. I create a folder on the desktop called Gempack, all lowercase, and that's important. It needs to be the exact spelling, just Gempack. And I put it in that folder. And now you will see that I'm going to try to uh, CD into that directory. So that's my present working directory. I'm CDing into the desktop, into Gempack. And then I show that that folder is in there. Now we got to create a symbolic link. And if you've seen any of my other guides, this may sound familiar. We're about to cross paths into all the other guides. So ln s Gempack, whatever version you have. And then L, or excuse me, N-A-W-I-P-S, all capital letters. And that's going to be very important, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. 
So here I'm going to show you that I am installing Nano. Just ignore this. Nano is just my favorite text editor. You can use whatever. Um, but I want to talk about what our next steps are. And like I said, if you have been watching any of my other guides, this is going to sound very familiar to you. So the next step we have to do is um, set our um, paths for the programs, and which is why I said we need to set our gem pack folder and the symbolic link into a folder on the desktop um, because now we are setting paths to, for the program to look in these specific folders. So in the gem pack 6.10 folder there are two things we have to edit. Now in reality we can probably only edit one of the files but um, I just want to make sure that we don't have any issues going forward and you'll see that I edit both. The first being gem environment I think it's supposed to be gen environment, but whatever. Um, they use the, or get rid of the mint. And we will be editing gem viral.profile. So we're going to go ahead and you'll see here I try to sudo this, but don't sudo. <laughs> All right. Nano, which that's my program. Gem viral. And you'll see that it'll bring up the configuration file here. I go down and this line here where it says N-A-W-I-P-S. I put in users dash weatherman, which is my username. You put in whatever your username is, desktop, and then gem pack, whatever, whatever. We can leave that alone. I save that. Now I'm going to edit the other one, dot profile. Go down where it says N-A-W-I-P-S. And I'm going to take out home and put in users weatherman, which is my username once again, desktop, and we can leave all the other stuff as it is. Alrighty, so finally we have to edit our source file, which um, if you see my other guides is the file that kind of configures your uh, terminal. So this is found in the user, users folder, so I, I cd back into the user folder, and then you do have to use the sudo command here, and it's dot um, profile is what we're editing so I said sudo dot profile or sorry sudo dot nano dot profile and as you can see I don't remember what exactly it is for bash since this is the command um, terminals that uses bash so it's dot users weatherman desktop gem pack n a w i p s and then I'm using the gem viral dot profile all right, save that. Now, it's very important that you source this. So source.profile, which is just the file that we just edited. And you should be good to go. Now I'm going to CD back into that directory, um, the gem pack directory, as you can see here. So you're probably wondering what happened there. Um, we're about to actually installed gem pack and I made one stupid mistake and um, that is I tried to sudo something um, and we're about to do right now and we don't actually need the sudo command so one of those stupid mistakes but um, here we go we're actually about to install gem pack finally so you will see I cd'd into our gem pack folder on the desktop and I cd'd into NAWIPS folder and I'm just about to make that same mistake again, but I'm like, wait a second, so I clear. And here we go. This will install Gempack now. Make everything. And this will install everything that is in the NAWIPS folder, which is where everything is located. So, what can I say now? Um, if you looked at one of my other guides, you will notice that I actually first do a test run of the make file but because this is Mac and there's some nuances with Mac I go just straight for the kill and as you can see I just said all right let's do this we're not gonna test it out first and there's a couple reasons why I do that first being um, it's really hard to track down errors in Mac and there's actually a lot of errors that you will see if you look through the log file um, and we can just ignore all of them 
and we will just have to test at the very end to see whether or not our program actually installed. Now this will take a while. Um, I can't tell you how long because like I said I'm using a virtual machine. It took me over an hour and I gotta say that it's probably my machine and not reflective of what your machine was like. I have installed Genpack on Macs before and I would say it probably took 30 minutes if I am not mistaken. It's been a while since I've installed on Mac but Anyway, this is going to take a while. It's going to run on your computer for a while. I don't think I would be doing anything else at this point except letting this program run. So we'll let this go, and when we come back, it will be the moment of truth. We'll see you then. I made it to the end of the installation process, and if you took a quick look at that, that is what it said at the end. I'm not sure why I quit out of this. I don't know. must have been by mistake. Um, as you can look at the time, if you compare the times, this took forever on my machine. And I promise you, it will not take that long on your machine. So, moment of truth, opened up a new terminal, gdplot, my favorite program. Oh, look, went, run, and there you go. Successful launch of Gempack. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment or check out my website where I go in depth um, and I will have a link in the description with the, my website. Check out some of my other things. I have a cool Gempack color selector program running right now which uh, you can edit the colors in Gempack which I know a lot of you may be interested in. So thank you for watching this and have a good day. We'll see you again.